Tricks and treachery are the practice of fools that don't have enough brains to be honest. Benjamin Franklin. That made me so mad. Do you understand if one of my children die, how hard it would be to ever forgive the guy who was bringing that home to us? Meanwhile, did you forget? Two minutes later. I realize that's ridiculous. As you can tell by Cody's great rage and furious anger, that he was extremely frustrated at the possibility that one of his younger children could be threatened by the negligence of one of their older siblings is complete bullshit. And I'm going to explain why. <laughs> but before I do, hi, my name is James and this is my take on reality. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Cody and how he is deceiving or at least attempting to deceive the audience and the viewers and everybody involved about why he's actually mad and why I think he's actually mad and what he's actually trying to accomplish. But before I get into it, I want to first say thank you to anybody who spends time to watch the videos and I want to thank my subscribers. Thank you so much for helping to grow the channel. I genuinely appreciate it. For anybody who watches or listens to the videos and you're not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's easy to do. <laughs> it helps the channel out. It helps me out. And hey, who doesn't want to help a brother out? So go ahead and give me that HBO special, which stands for Help a Brother Out Special by clicking the subscribe button, ringing the bell for notifications on when you can upload new videos and watch those videos. Thanks. Now let's get it. That was horrible. But we're going to get it anyway. All right, well, push comes down to shove. It comes down to this very simply. Cody wants to pretend to be outraged as a PR stunt. It's a simple PR stunt. So he throws out terms and phrases like, think about the children. What about the children? Nobody's talking about the children. And all that crap. Because when push comes down to shove, and this goes for even like the baseline base politicians they always throw out that crap like they have some you know we need to give this that and the other and the reason why we're going to do it is for the kids and the kids don't have nothing to do with it like what are you talking about children ain't got nothing to do with this <laughs> we should be able to pollute the ocean think of the children <laughs> they want pollution they like it they like chewing their water it's incredible now it's very funny to me that the child that he always singles out is being his point of concern is truly Truly is the one, oh, he could have made Truly, I'm trying to protect Truly, even when he's yelling at Janelle. I'm trying to protect Truly with Robin and her two kids, who are young as well, younger than Truly, in fact, are in the house. And they're yelling at Robin's house with the kids inside, talking about he wants to protect Truly. Like, everybody knows which kids you're talking about. So you might as well come out and say it. So you're covering there, too. And everything that they do is a distraction and a lie. Cody is becoming very proficient at telling a lot of lies. He's just not proficient or good at telling good lies. And that's the difference. Now, what is the purpose of telling these lies? It's twofold, in my opinion. First thing he wants to do is he wants to distract away from the real reason why he's angry. Two... He wants to come off, because like I said, the thing that he uses is, I want to protect my children, I want to protect my family. See, he's trying to present himself as a good father and a good dad. This is one of the things that he majorly gets criticized for online or in Reddit or you know in different news outlets. They'll always go back to the fact that Cody is kind of a suspect father at best, and he's a never-there dad and a never-there husband. And you know what I mean? Just an absentee husband. So he always wants to try to present himself in a way where my first concern, first and foremost, is my family. And this is why I'm making the decisions I'm making. This is why people dislike me because of the choices that I'm making to protect my family. When, in fact, you're trying to protect your family from your family? Like, what are you talking about? These young men are your family, too. Gwendolyn and Ariel are your family, too. Gw Gwendolyn and Isabel are your family, too. It's not just truly Solomon and Ari. So the idea that these are the only three people in your family you're worried about is ridiculous, especially when you're only worried about three children and you're the father of 18 children. 
So you have 15 whole kids that you don't give a damn about, but you're only concerned about three. Crazy to me. Now, what are my examples that this is all crap and a whole bucket of, of horse pocky or whatever you want to call it? When you look at what actually happened, he criticized and sat on the stage and cried and yelled. He yelled at Janelle several times about the dangers of uh, the boys being able to go out and talk to their girlfriends and go to work. He yelled at them and, and gave them a hard time to go. He stood out there on Coyote Pass and yelled at Gabriel and Garrison about them going to work and not being allowed to come, come around the family because they're disrespecting the rules and disrespecting Robin and disrespecting everybody and putting everybody in danger. Who was the person who actually made uh, brought the sickness home? Who was the person who brought the virus home? One of Robin's kids, supposedly. Oh, Robin's child went to school and she brought home the virus. And everybody got sick, and I had a dead death experience. You don't know what I've been through, and all that craziness. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be mad, wouldn't you be just as mad and just as furious at Robin's daughter, who actually brought home the virus and put your two kids, two of the three kids that you're worried about, live in that house? You didn't flip out and go crazy and cuss out Robin's kids. You aren't sitting there yelling at Suki. Oh, she's so worried about being in school and being involved with these other kids. And she brought home a virus, almost killed me and her mama. You didn't say any of that. But you're talking about what these two young men could have possibly would have did if there was a possibility that they could have possibly did it. And this maybe could have happened if the fifth moon was in the fifth room of the... Uh, the Capricorn and all that other foolishness, then I possibly could have lost three of my children <laughs> in a ridiculous rant. So at the end of the day, the person that you who actually did it is not the person that you're holding accountable. You're still mad at these two young men because they possibly could have maybe did something that put your kids in danger when if that's what you believed, you have somebody in your house who actually put your kids in danger, supposedly. And let's talk about Cody's COVID experience, him and Robin's COVID experience. One of the subscribers that I have to my channel actually wrote something that I thought was very moving. She had talked about the effect that Cody and Robin's claim of COVID sickness and how bad it was for them and how that discussion that they have affects her. Because this particular uh, subscriber, and I'm not going to yell her name out because I don't know if I have permission to do so, but I did read your comment. She said that she sat there and she held her father's hand as he expired from COVID. He died from this. And so for you two to sit there and pretend that you understand what it's like to have that level of loss because of this virus is insulting, not just to people like me who watch the show, but it's insulting to people who actually lost people because of, of the virus. And they had to suffer from that. I had COVID and it was no picnic. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, you know, my experience is even close to somebody like my subscriber's father's experience with this virus. It's not. Robin, she went to the hospital because she wasn't feeling well. She was a little short of breath. The doctor said, go ahead and take her in. She wasn't on a ventilator. They weren't watching her. She stayed there for, what, overnight? And Cody sat in the parking lot talking about, oh, I should go in there too because I don't have nobody at home basically take care of me. So I need to go in there and hear how bad I am, but I don't want to go in there because they won't let me even sit with Robin because Robin is supposed to be your cheerleader. And you're, you're so demented. And this is, a, this is the way I took it. You're so demented. You wanted to go in the hospital and sit with your sick wife so that she can make you feel better about you being sick. You're a ridiculous person. And so as we talk about and put to bed the whole idea that you were mad at the boys because they possibly could have put you in a position that you and Robin were in when her daughter put you in a position that you and Robin were in, according to you, then we can put that to bed that you're mad, actually mad at these boys about that or these young men. I won't call them boys. These young men about that. So what do I think? What I think is, I think Cody actually brought the damn thing home. How about that? I think Cody is responsible. I think that the Robin's daughter is taking the heat 
because it would be too it would be too golden and it would be a PR nightmare if Cody did something to put his family at risk because you know let's not let's keep in mind he went to a wedding officiated a wedding as I showed in the uh, in the earlier clip where he was dancing around nobody in not a mask in sight zero social distancing and he's out there dancing and jumping around like a fool. And to be honest with you, I have no problem with the way he was dancing. If you go out and dance, I expect people to go out and dance for fun. I love seeing that. I love people see, seeing people have a good time. If you can't dance, I have more respect for you if you go out on the dance floor and shake your tail feathers. I do. But at the end of the day, if you're telling your kids that they can't go to work and they can't take care of themselves, and because they can't go to work, then they should pack on packing a bag and going to find their own place. With what money? You're not taking care of them financially, but you expect them not to work, and then you expect them to go and pay for a house or a place to stay. You make no sense. Then you were going to gun shows. You can't tell me that they were sitting there with the masks on, and if anybody has ever been to a gun show ever, they, these are not people who are concerned about what the CDC says, in the least. Or what the government is telling them to do. These are not the folks. And I don't want to, you know, say like outright, oh, they deniers and all that. I'm not going to say that. But I'm just saying like a lot of these folks are not going to be walking around with a whole bunch of masks on. What this tells me is, is that Cody actually has a selective fear. He has selective fear. So he's scared to death when it comes to Garrison and Gabe, them going out going to work, maybe socializing with their loved one, their girlfriends or love interests. He's terrified of COVID and, oh, it crippled me and I can't do nothing. Everybody has to stay quarantined. But when it came to things that he wanted to do, all of a sudden the fear can be put aside, which tells us that it's not the, the, the virus itself. It's just that it's what he wants to do and what he wants to be a part of. And it was a means for him to be able to control his adult children. I don't want you doing this. I don't want you doing that. You have to listen to me. Not because it benefits you or it helps you in any way. It's just that I want to make sure that I have a, a, a discipline check. I want to see that if, if I give you an order, you're going to follow it. And the fact that you didn't follow the order makes me angry and it makes me upset. This is the equivalent of somebody who goes to a club or a party and you walk up to a young lady and say, hey, would you like to dance? And she said, no, nah, no, nah, my feet hurt. Nah, my back hurt. I'm tired. It's, I don't even like this song. And then all of a sudden, Idris Elba, uh, Brad Pitt, young Brad Pitt, uh, one of the hot boys, Come walking in there and say, hey, would you like to dance? Oh, God, this is my song. I've been waiting for somebody to ask me. Like, no, it's not the fact that she didn't want to dance because she was hurt or she didn't like the song. She just didn't want to dance with you. And it's not that Cody doesn't want to protect his family or or he was, a, was afraid of the COVID or all that. It's just that you, the kids, Janelle, Christine, Mary, their kids, just weren't important enough for him to want to spend time with him. So he couldn't get around the fact that, well, you know, I don't want to take the risk because hanging out with you is too risky. Me going to a wedding, me going to a gun show, that's not risky or that's worth the risk. Me hanging out with the kids, I don't really want to hang out with you guys. And this comes to what I was saying before. This, to me, is why he's actually mad at his sons. He's not mad about the whole quarantine and all that issue. His anger is actually rooted in what Christine said. She said, I didn't know what a soulmate looked like. I didn't know what a functioning marriage looked like until I saw it with him and Robin. For the kids, they didn't know what a father was. They, didn't, they thought a father was somebody who came around once a week and hung out and maybe played with them or sat on the tablet or the phone or the computer while they were doing something and then just hung out with the mom for a little bit and then he went off and did what he was going to do or he went upstairs and went to sleep. That's what they thought a father was. But when they saw how he was with their siblings, Ari, Saul, Brianna, and all of Robin's children, he they understood what Cody was capable of. And like the wives, they started to develop envy and jealousy because they said to themselves, why don't I have that? Why doesn't dad pay attention to me the same way he pays attention to them? And because of that, they started to act out in more 
<laughs> to their detriment, they started to speak out. And when they started to cite him and started calling him out for the stuff he was doing, he had to find a reason why he was mad. He couldn't come out and say, I'm mad because you guys are saying that I'm not a good father. And you're saying that I treat your mom like crap. He can't say that because then he might actually have to face the real issue and talk about the real issue. So what you do is you manufacture a bull crap issue that has nothing to do with anything. Thing. It's a red herring. It's a distraction. So you come up with your distraction and then you start pounding on tables and yelling and raising your voice and talk about all the sacrifices you made and the knife and the kidney and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, it's all in the effort for you to be able to force them to do what you want them to do and for you to distract away from the issues. So you force them to come back to you and apologize for some non-issue, but at the end of the day, they have to prostrate and bend the knee to you and kiss the ring to you and tell you how great you are in order for them to come back, which also gets into the whole thing with Suki. When he was on a stage with Suki, why in the world does Suki have to ask him to apologize to his sons? After everything you went through, you realized you were wrong. You realized that your fear was didn't have uh, merit or whatever you said it was. And like, oh, I did all this stuff because I was afraid. You said that before, almost two years prior, when you were out there talking to Janelle at uh, Robin's house on the back porch when you were hooping and hollering at her. You said the same thing. So you understood for two years that your, your fear and your concerns were unfounded. And the precautions you took were unnecessary, and it would, could get you either way. But you still wanted the boys to come back and apologize to you. My favorite part is, boys, I'm sorry, and all that. And you said that you at one point he criticized Janelle for coming between him and his boys. Don't talk for me and my boys. Don't communicate for me because me and you barely talk. So you don't talk for me. But at no time during those two years did he pick up the phone himself and say, guys, I want to have a conversation. Guys, let's talk. Guys, we need to work this out. Guys, come on, let's get this going. Guys, what's up? You know what I mean? And if they're not picking up the phone and they're not taking your phone calls, you drive over to their house. You knock on the door. That's what a father does. That's what a man does. See, that's one of the things, too. Even in high school, if I had a problem, high school, middle school, if I had a problem with somebody, I would walk up to that person. I would tell them I have a problem with them. I wouldn't have to go through a whole bunch of who shot John and talk to this one and whisper down the lane. I walk right up to the person I had a problem with and I tell them what the problem is. And we do what we got to do to work it out. But this guy, he's hiding from his sons. And that, for somebody who demands so much respect, it's hard for somebody to respect you if you don't respect yourself enough to walk up and express yourself. If you can't tell me what you feel like, I don't, and I've even had this conversation with my kids and I've had this conversation with other folks. If I'm sitting there and I'm, and I find out that somebody is talking crap about me behind my back, I don't even address it. You know why I don't address it? Until you have the balls and ovarian fortitude or testicular fortitude to walk up to me and say it to my face, then it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist and it's not worth my time. Because when push comes down to shove, if you really have a problem with me, as far as I'm concerned, you'll come up and address your problem with me, not with your friends, not with your buddy, not with the person around the corner, not with the guy down the street. You come up to me and talk to me about it. If he has a problem with his kids, you should, instead of you sitting on the stage telling Suki about it or telling Janelle about it or sitting there in the hovel talking to Robin about it in the backyard burning wood flakes or whatever the hell you do out there shucking trees, you need to sit there and call your boys and have a conversation with them. You know, there was an old phrase when I I was a kid, you know, having a man to man conversation, you know, I know that's a little outdated, but that's what you need to do. Go have a man to man conversation with your kids. So if you want to have a relationship with your kids and you want to have a better relationship with your sons, I suggest you actually start to have a relationship with them. Pick up the phone, call them, spend some time with them. Don't just expect them to adore you and love you because your title is father and because you donated a little bit of bodily fluid in order to create them. Being somebody's father and being involved in somebody's life is a privilege. And in order for you to earn that privilege, you have to be able to spend time with them. And you have to, instead of you sitting around all the time talking about all the sacrifices you made and all the stuff you gave up, the one thing that you need to sacrifice instead of you sacrificing money, instead of you sacrificing your, your soul going to work, you need to sacrifice some time. 
You need to sacrifice some time. Spend some time with your kids. Don't talk about all the stuff you did for them. All the stuff you bought for them. The one thing that Garrison and Gabriel talked about incessantly, Isabel talked about incessantly, uh, and, and a lot of the older kids always talk about and always refer back to is your inability to spend time with them. They don't care about, I've said this a million times, children think about the experience. When they think of you and they have that warm, fuzzy feeling about you as a parent, they don't think about the stuff you bought them or the places you took them. What they think about is the time that you spent with them. That's what they remember. They remember how you made them feel. You make your sons feel like they aren't anything. If you have a young man who is about 20 some odd years old and he's on TV openly weeping because you won't spend time with him, you don't make him feel like a man. And so my question is, Cody, what are you trying to raise? Are you trying to raise a bunch of individuals who feel as though they have to seek somebody else's approval and somebody else's validation, that their feelings, their concerns, their emotions are inconsequential unless they have the validation of a third party and they tell them that their feelings and stuff are valid? Because that's what you're doing to them. Spend time with your kids. And for people, and every now and again, I will say this, this is a bonus thing. I have people every now and again who talk about that when they were coming up, they didn't have a strong role model or a parent in their life. At the end of the day, if you are somebody who doesn't have somebody strong in your life to help guide you and talk to you, it's not your fault. It's their fault because it's on them to make sure that they're present for you and they're spending time with you in order to help to reinforce you. Move don't forgive them and forgive yourself. It's not the fact that you didn't measure up to being the perfect child. It's the idea that they didn't measure up to being a parent. And it's on them. That's my take. I'm James, and this has been my take on reality. And I'm out. Cause I've been living life right like I could.